These are my biggest cybersecurity career regrets part two. So earlier this year, I made a video on my career regrets for cybersecurity slash the reality of working in cybersecurity. And this video is going to be in addition to that list for anyone who is interested in cybersecurity, but wants a real and honest answer in terms of the pros and the cons of the career. Obviously a lot of what we see in the media is glorified and, and very much stereotyped. So what you see in movies and on TV is not going to be what you get on the actual job. And hopefully this video can give you some insight into my experience, especially going through my early career as a cybersecurity analyst. So starting with my first topic is going to be not getting into a more technical role in cybersecurity. So this definitely is going to look different for everyone, but specifically for me, coming from a software development background, I still wanted those hard skills. And going into cybersecurity, I had no idea what really those hard skills were. But because I was lucky enough to be in a cybersecurity rotation program, I actually did get a chance to kind of go into a more technical role on a junior pen testing team. But in my first role in cybersecurity, I really was kind of like a project manager, someone who's definitely more on the PM side of a security team, while the other half of my work was purely software development because I told my manager I wanted to keep up my coding skills. So the second half of my job was the only thing where I did anything technical and the other side was more so Jira management, a lot of telemetry and metrics and, and just cybersecurity metrics in general. So basically I use a lot more soft skills than hard skills. And that was something I wish I looked into earlier because based on my knowledge of cybersecurity, the main jobs I knew of were specifically on the red team side, basically the hackers, the pen testers. And I really didn't think about what other cybersecurity roles could look like. And I think that was my first mistake that I have made going into cybersecurity because I went into a job thinking that I was going to do very cool things um, in cybersecurity, but I ended up just kind of managing a Jira board. And while it was really good experience, it wasn't necessarily the cybersecurity experience that I was looking for. But granted, I was still very lucky to be able to have the other half of my job in that role because I was still able to code and, and do things that weren't on an Excel spreadsheet. So not to say that you have to be, you know, in a very technical role in cybersecurity when you go in. I do think that the first few years of your career really do kind of pave the way for what your future career is going to look like and getting those hard skills are very important to starting out whether you're on the blue team or the red team or or in it auditing or compliance even learning how to use tools in cybersecurity or specific platform or or just a generic skill set is really important because because after i finished my first rotation in my role i really didn't know what to put on my resume i was in a cybersecurity rotation program so i knew that i was going to have other chances and i was lucky enough you know to go into different teams because i can't imagine staying on that team for two or three years and and just working on the things that i was working on and not to say that they weren't important or relevant i do think they were important but they weren't necessarily the things that helped me grow my cybersecurity skill set they weren't things that helped me learn a new tool or understand a specific topic in cybersecurity. So that is what I mean by going more technical and trying to go and trying to learn more hard skills and soft skills in your early career because it's going to pay out in the long run when you eventually go into your new job or go into a new team and they ask you about what you worked on and, and hopefully it's not just working on metrics. The next thing I want to discuss is not studying for certifications together. And before you completely turn away from this, I do think there is something to say about certifications that kind of go hand in hand. For example, if you're someone who is taking the Security Plus, maybe studying for the Network Plus at the same time would have been beneficial to you. Of course, depending on the roles that you want to go into, if the Security Plus and the Network Plus together would have helped you in your career. But now looking back, um, I took my certification exam in 2020, which feels not that long ago, but also like it's been decades. And now as someone who has been out of college for three and a half years, almost four years, and the last time I studied officially for a certification, it's actually very difficult to pick up a textbook again and keep my attention span on the book and studying heads down. Um, I've noticed that and I think this is another reason why people say, specifically for people who want to go into this, for if you want to go into a master's program, people typically recommend, oh, just go right into your master's program or take one gap year, don't wait too long, otherwise your mental space won't be there to you know, be focused on school. And I can totally see that now looking back i definitely could have i definitely could have tried to study for my network plus while I was studying for my security plus you know if i was someone who was interested in network security which personally i'm not very good at so i probably wouldn't have um but you know what i mean there's a lot of adjacent certifications that kind of go hand in hand it's not the exact same material but they kind of fit well together even something like taking your security plus with your pen test plus the pen test plus is definitely more beginner than the ceh or the oscp definitely a more relatively early career certification to get for those of you who are trying to go into red team or become a pen tester and security plus gives you the foundations of cybersecurity while the pen test plus is more so on the red team side application security vulnerabilities 
these exploits, things like that. And because you're studying for it at the same time, you don't lose that mental capacity to be able to study heads down for a long time. Nowadays, I can't imagine reading a textbook for 40 pages a day. And back then, I did that all the time for like four months. So I feel like if you're someone who is able to and you have the time and while you're already studying for a certification, if there even is a little bit of overlap between the certifications, but then there's two certifications that go well together hand in hand. For example, a combination I can think of is maybe the CISSP and the CEH. I feel like those two combined would be so good for anyone who is maybe going to be like a manager for a red team um like that would be a very interesting combination even the oscp and the cisp together i think you know a combination like that shows that you know those foundational security things and it also shows you have the skill set for ethical hacking and red teaming yeah things like that is what i'm talking about um obviously i'm not at the level to take either of those certification exams but i do think that there are ones to consider if you're someone who is trying to go down that route and and it may help you if you're able to study for them together maybe not even at the same time but maybe just keeping the flow so after you study for your cissp you can then go and study for your ceh and without too much of a time in between so that you're still in that flow state of being able to of being able to study productively compared to you know waiting years between your certification and then it gets a lot harder to start and then you push it back and you talk yourself out of things but the next thing i want to talk about is not taking time off when you need it i feel like this is a common trend in tech professionals or cybersecurity professionals specifically um, maybe it's because a lot of times we're wired to feel like something is going to go wrong and that we have to be there when things go wrong and because of that a lot of cybersecurity professionals i know especially in my previous company just had so many vacation days and sick days and personal days that they never use and they're just saving it up and then to the point where the company caps it at a certain time at a certain number of days that you have stored up that's when they use it so i think that's definitely something to note that sometimes especially during the pandemic for example when many of us couldn't go travel didn't have a chance to go on any trips um a lot of us just didn't take our vacation days at all even though we could have just taken a week off and just you know relaxed at home or went somewhere local or just relax in some way that allowed you to unplug from work and this is probably another big reason why there is such a huge case of burnout and stress and overall job dissatisfaction in cybersecurity i feel like for a lot of us it's hard to turn off that it's hard to turn off that switch for work because a lot of your job can also be kind of like a reflection of after work for example if you're reading cybersecurity news or if you're tinkering with some kind of I don't know like some kind of physical device in your home lab or if you're doing a ctf on the weekend or capture the flag our field really is kind of there to kind of keep you always sort of on because your hobbies may well be just about cybersecurity outside of work as well so i think that's definitely a skill that you have to kind of hone and learn throughout your career but for those of you who are going into cybersecurity definitely make sure that you're keeping in mind your work-life balance and your personal health and your physical health outside of work, um, especially taking time off when you need it, taking sick days, um, taking care of yourself and your family, just things like that that we often tend to forget. Next thing is not trying to look for remote jobs sooner. So even in my early career, I felt like after the pandemic, I had always wanted to look for a full-time remote job. I knew that my previous role did not want me to work remotely. Um, I was eventually gonna go back into the office and I was still too, scared i don't know what it was but there was something keeping me from applying to new jobs maybe it was just imposter syndrome saying oh what other company is going to hire you with only two years of rotational program experience in a cybersecurity role like you weren't even like a real security analyst or a real security engineer and and i'm sure i'm not the only one who has ever had those thoughts so i kind of just didn't apply to any jobs until companies started reaching out to me from a resume that i put into a resume database like a while a while back ago probably more than a year or so ago and this was before i started applying to jobs and before i got started in my current job which i am still in so that was what gave me the courage to actually start applying but before that wow it was so it was so not in my mind to apply for jobs because i didn't think that i could do it yet i didn't think i was experienced enough for another role in cybersecurity especially because i came from a rotational program so it felt like i was doing like an extension of college since i was still expected to be learning on the job and then when i got into my full-time role after my rotation i still didn't feel like i was very knowledgeable in many areas in cybersecurity so that definitely prevented me from applying to jobs but even though i knew i wanted to work remotely and my previous company was going to make me come back into the office and if i had done that sooner it would have saved me a lot of headache a lot of money because i actually actually signed a lease uh put down my security deposit and first last month's rent and everything for my new apartment 
moved to New York and then moved back because I ended up getting a job um, during the time, between the time that I signed my lease and, and moving into my apartment. And then I had to continue paying rent until they found a new tenant when I exited my lease early. So basically about six months of rent paid for that mistake. Not a very good time. Um, definitely not a great investment, but hopefully you guys learn from my mistakes. If you want to switch a job in cybersecurity, definitely go for it. Even if you think no one's gonna hire you, even if you think you're too early in your career, trust me, you are not. There's going to be many companies who are willing to hire you. And I actually made a video recently on switching jobs in cybersecurity. When should you switch jobs? Um, like long-term career impact and stuff like that. So I'll link that down in the description if you guys want to watch that. All right guys, sorry in advance for the lighting changes, but I had to film the rest of this video in the evening and the lighting is definitely not the best. The next thing I want to discuss, I won't go into too much detail about, not taking things at work personally. This is something I feel like I sometimes need to remind myself as well, but essentially work, work is basically like your business profile and your real life is your personal profile. And like there may be things that go wrong at work and sometimes for example someone might give you feedback or someone might correct you on something or point out a mistake that you made and all these things are good things of course to happen because you want to be able to continuously grow from feedback and and recommendations from your teammates but one thing that you shouldn't do is to take that and then personally see it as as something wrong with you like something personal or taking it as an attack on your character or something like that um that is always a line that you should draw before anything else because Sometimes there are bad days at work and if you tie your work identity and your personal identity together, especially when it comes to feedback and mistakes, it really doesn't help you in any way. I would say take the information, use it, learn from it, absorb it, and then move on. Don't let it get to you too personally. Um, I've previously had experiences where I got feedback from my manager and, and in my head all I was thinking was, wow, I am just, I'm a horrible employee, I'm a horrible person. Um, why didn't I see this before or why didn't I think of that before she had to point it out to me? And that in itself is just an overreaction from feedback and, and that is a prime example of what you will probably go through in your early career. So just pointing it out there now. And the last thing I want to discuss is not necessarily a mistake or regret that I had, but one that I've seen a lot of my previous coworkers have, and that is not switching jobs frequently or enough in your early career. So I've had teammates and previous coworkers who've been working in their roles for 10, 20 plus years at the same company or on the same team. And one of the regrets that I've seen that have been a relatively consistent trend is not switching jobs regularly, especially considering the fact that companies for example, will not bump your salary just to keep up with the trends. You know, nowadays a college hire could potentially graduate and go into a six-figure job where they may be making actually very similar salaries to those that have been working 10, 20 years in the same role on the same team doing more junior level work. So I think that's always something to call out, especially if you've been working for the same company and companies don't necessarily feel the need to you know, give you a salary promotion or give you a raise because other new hires are getting higher salaries now. Unfortunately, there's no backwards compatibility slash backwards matching of salaries when it comes to like bringing other people's salaries up because, because obviously companies still want to make their profits and things like that. Considering someone in a similar position with 20 years of experience, if they switch jobs, maybe even two or three times during their entire career, they could have significant salary increases compared to someone who stayed at the same company for 20 years. So definitely something to keep in mind. I do think it's definitely important, especially considering that you want to get paid fairly for your skills and experience that you bring to the table. Definitely do not undersell yourself, especially with cybersecurity professionals being so sought after. Even in a bad economy or an economic downturn, I still think cybersecurity is a really good role to get into and I actually have a cybersecurity course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity linked in my description below and get your foot in the door for that first job which is always going to be the hardest one to get thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye